In this video, we're going to cover some of the most common errors that you will encounter when you're developing your Power BI reports. We're going to briefly talk about how I troubleshoot errors when they come. We're also going to look at a few of the examples of some of the common ones, as well as how you can go about into fixing them. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So when you're creating Power BI reports, it's not uncommon to encounter some errors. And if you're new to Power BI development, it can be a bit nerve wracking. Luckily, Power BI does a good job at giving hints as to where the issues could be. So now when I encounter errors, I'm familiar with most of them and I know exactly what to look at to fix the problem. And today I want to show you how my thought process works when troubleshooting these errors. Because there are many components in Power BI that work together when you're developing a report, you first need to figure out where the problem is. And at this point, I chopped this up into four parts. Is it a problem with the source itself? Is it a problem with the transformation of your data in Power Query? Is it a calculation in DAX? Or is it a problem in Power BI service? If the problem is obscure and I don't know what's causing the issue, let's say there is a measure in my report that's throwing up an error. First, I would check that the calculation and the syntax is correct. If there's no problem there, I move up the chain and check to see if the transformation uh, breaks the data in any way. Maybe there's a wrong data type, for example. And then lastly, if there's nothing wrong with that too, then I move up the chain once more to check the source and see if the data itself has a problem for me to fix. This is how I typically troubleshoot errors in Power BI. Now let's go through a couple of examples and I wanna show you how I would go about to fixing them. So here's the first example that we have, which I've already created in a Power BI report. And at the moment it's getting uh, data from a table called orders. Within this file called the orders, it's an Excel file within my uh, local computer. So there's nothing much going on here. I've created some basic transformation steps and even a basic visual for us to uh, show the type of data that we have in this one single file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly move that file to somewhere else. And then I'm gonna hit the refresh button here. The first error that you will arrive at and we're gonna look at is this one. It says, could not find the file in this location. But essentially because the file that the Power BI report is referring to has been moved, so it's not in the same location as it expects. It's looking for a file that essentially doesn't exist, or at least doesn't exist in this location. So to fix this, we can do a couple of things. So first, we can maybe try to change or modify the source step. You can do that from Power Query itself. So let's open it up. And then under, so you'll see if I hit the refresh here, it will fail. You will have an option here to go to error. So it will just simply jump to the step where it thinks the problem exists. So at the moment we know, and it jumps us to the source step. We hit edit settings here, which will open up the browse to say which file path we need to follow. So we moved it to this folder here. So we're gonna just reference that like this, hit okay, and you will see that that will have fixed the problem. The other way that you could have fixed this is by simply moving the right file to the right path in our file path. Now that we are in Power Query, let's talk about the source itself. So at the moment, the source that we're using at is an Excel file. As you'll know, you can also use other source types like a database or an online service. But the key thing to note is that wherever the data is, the field names or the column headers, even table names must stay the same in order to avoid errors. This is because when you're transforming data in Power BI, uh, when these elements are removed or changed, Power BI won't have any way to reference the data within it. So, let me just give you an example here. So let's say, let's go back to this orders table here. 
I'm going to open up the Excel file, which is essentially just a flat table here. And um, we'll rename this one, let's say, order ID. Well, just with a space, essentially. So if I hit save now, and we'll try to do a refresh here on Power Query, you'll see that it will throw up an error. It will say that column order ID of the table wasn't found. If we go up a couple of steps, you will see that here in the change type, it references the column and it's saying, if you look at the formula bar here, what it does is it references order ID and changes it into an int64, which is essentially changing it from any data type into a number. If Power BI references a column or a field that doesn't exist, it will throw up an error like this. So an easy fix for this is uh, to simply make sure that you don't reference the columns or the fields. So at this point, there are a couple of ways that you can try to fix this error. So the first thing is you can simply just remove uh, or just make sure that the references that you have in the steps are the same as what you have on the source. So we'll just add the space there and that worked. Or if we just put it back to how it was, you can delete the step altogether that will um, and recreate it. So if we highlight everything and then hit transform detect data type, so you will see it will redo everything except it also now knows the new format of that field. So in an Excel source perspective, it's not just the field headers that you want to be aware of. You also need to make sure that the sheet names don't change. As you notice the file name uh, and even the location of the file itself. Another thing to note as well, from my experience of working with Excel files is that Power BI doesn't work well with the .xls formats. So this is an old Excel format that was a default format back in Excel 1997, but a lot of online services still have this as an option to export their data on. Mostly though, this has now been replaced by the .xlsx type, which works perfectly with Power BI. So if you're using Excel files as your source, make sure you don't use the old formats uh, with Power BI. So the two errors that we've seen so far are what we call step errors. So these are simply errors where you will need to find the step um, that has the error and fix that step itself. But there's also another error type within Power Query called the cell level error. So let me show you. Let's open up the orders uh, table here. I'm just gonna make some random change here on the order ID, save it. And then we will try to hit the refresh button here. Here we go. So when we hit the refresh button just now, it loads the data successfully but it tells me that there are a few errors. So if we select the view errors here, it will open up Power Query for us. And Power Query creates an error catching query for us to see where the problem is. So it shows us the error itself. So we know and we can see that the error is in this error or order ID column. And we can see the details and what happened at the bottom here. So it's saying we couldn't convert to number and the detail is, is, uh, is basically we put the text on a number type column, which caused an error. This is what we call a cell level error, where the issue is in a cell rather than in a whole step. So there are two ways that you can approach to fix this. So the most obvious fix here is to obviously make the change on your source itself in the orders table because we made that manual change, we can simply change that back into an actual order ID, which will fix this problem. The second option that you have here is to simply remove the rows with an error from your uh, table or from your query. So in this case, you will see that you will have an option when you hover over here to remove errors, or you can just simply right click and replace errors or remove errors. So you can replace errors by something else, or you can just remove the errors completely. So whichever option you choose, once you do it, so let's say, let's just remove that, that error column or row for now. If we go back to the query here that has been generated, if this shows as empty, that means there are no cell level errors anymore in your query. So you're pretty much ready to just uh, close and apply this, uh, this model. So we'll just simply delete this one because we don't really need it anymore. And you hit close and apply. So that will 
load up your data into data model without any errors. Now let's move on to another error that you might uh, face, which is pretty common. So this one says um, the table order unique contains a duplicate value is, and this is not allowed in the one side of a many to one relationship for the columns that are used for a primary key of a table. So it's a bit long winded. And basically this is to do with relationships that you previously established. So at the moment and off camera, what I've done is I've created a one to many relationship here between the orders unique table to the orders table. So the orders table has a list of all the orders, obviously, and each order can have multiple products in them. But I wanted to have a separate table which has a list of all the unique orders. So you would have order 10248, 10249, which is basically a unique list of orders. And we've established that it's a one to many relationship. Now, this type of error might come up if you've made or if there's a problem with your uh, one part of your relationship, the order unique, for example, in this case, where it might have a duplicate value where it shouldn't be. So because we've established this relationship, that means this list or this primary key that we have here, the order ID needs to be unique, at least in this table. So there are a couple of ways that you can fix this. So obviously the first uh, and easiest way uh, was well, not really a fix, but it will remove the error itself is by deleting the relationship and then hit uh, apply changes. So you will see that here we we have the order table, uh, the order unique here, but it's not really unique, the order IDs. It did remove the error, but that's not really what we want. So what you can do, so with, let's go to Power Query. Obviously, the first thing that you can think about is to fix this from the source itself. If you're getting it from uh, a table outside of Power BI, or you have the option to make sure that the order ID column is unique. So to do that, we'll simply go and select the, uh, the column from this table, remove rows and remove duplicates. This will make sure that you have a unique list of order ID in this table. If you hit close and apply, it will load and it won't have a problem. And now we can set up the relationship once more. And you'll see that it will have a one-to-many relationship without any errors. Now let's move on to calculation issues that you might have when you're working with DAX. And honestly, there's so many variations here, so I'm not going to cover everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, uh, just show you on the data, data view and create a new column in our orders table. I'm going to name this one just as an example calendar, and I'm going to use calendar auto at the moment. So if we hit enter here, you might get an error that looks something like this. It says a table of multiple values was applied where a single value was expected. So different functions in DAX can return different results. It can return either a single value or a table value. And there are valid use cases for both. In this case, what we are trying to do is to put a table results into individual rows. So to avoid this, you can either convert this table into a single value. So you put it in a context of a calculate or aggregate it using min, max, average, or whichever function that returns a scalar value, or you can simply just return it in a table. So here, instead of creating a new column, let's create a new table instead. And let's do the exact same thing, calendar auto. And what you'll see is that it now doesn't return any errors. And what it does, and because it returns a table, is it creates a DAX table for us. It generates a list of dates that are uh, currently present in our data model, in which case it's just uh, generating that list of dates for us. Pretty simple. So here is another example of an error that you might get in DAX. It says too few arguments were passed to the date function. The minimum argument count for the function is three. This means that for this function, you're missing the number of parameters that the function needs for it to work. So let's have a look at what it says on the documentation itself. So I can show you like what exactly I'm talking about. 
So if we jump here into the, um, uh, the, the documentation for the date function, it says that it returns a specific date in a date time format. It says that this is the syntax. So you say date and you give it three specific parameters. You give it the year, the month, and the day separated by commas and within this uh, open and closing parentheses. Now, because it's asking for three, that's what it needs to return the date for you. And granted, there are parameters that are optional, but in this case, because we and we need to provide three different values here. If we miss one of them, for example, here I've only specified the year and the month and not the day, that's what's causing the issue. So for us to fix this, we simply need to add another parameter. So we'll just do that and you'll see that will fix the issue. So here's another example here. It says it cannot convert value of type text to a number. And this could be vice versa, uh, depending on your data types. So essentially, when you're working with multiple data types within your tables or in your Power BI model, there might be restrictions that doesn't allow you to work uh, when you're trying to concatenate or combine them together unless they're at the same type. So for example, if you're adding numbers to numbers, that's fine. But if you're trying to add numbers to a text, that might not work uh, in many cases. So in this case, basically what we have is we're trying to add two values that are not quite numbers, even though what we want is to just concatenate them. And this is just an example, but there may be many different cases in which you will get this error, uh, but in a different manner. So that's what you need to bear in mind is the fact that the data types don't match for you to uh, do the calculation. So this specific instance is actually pretty easy to solve. So we don't really need to do anything. You can just simply use the ampersand, which will simply concatenate the category name and the order date for you quite easily. In other cases, if you want to change the data type of your values into something else, you can use the convert function, which in this case, we might want to convert a value to a different type. Lastly, if you can't troubleshoot the issue, a good tip from here is to Google the error that you get word by word. You can use the Park BI community for support, which is very active and I use it quite frequently. Most likely there will be someone else that have already encountered and solved the error that you're experiencing. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the most common errors that you will face when you're working with Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.